Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. Thank you that you've rewritten our stories. <laughs> you've just rewritten that mess and made it glorious and beautiful and filled with hope and victory, and we're so grateful. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Oh, yes, Stacy, you were right. That was the right song. <laughs> I had never heard that. He sent it to me, and I, 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 didn't, I didn't listen to it immediately. Listen to it. I had to listen to it again, and I had to listen to it again, and I had to listen to it again because it it is our testimony. It, it it's all of us. Amen, amen. All right. Well, tonight we're going to double header. We're going to have a double header. I just recently became. You may have known all of your Christian life, but I have been born again over forty years. I don't know why I didn't know this. Maybe you knew it and I didn't. Was zoning out. But just recently, the Lord began to reveal to me grace. I thought there was one grace. I did began to unfold in the scriptures to me, and I'm going to do that for you tonight, the fact that there is more than grace. And we need grace. Grace is what we have our entire life. But if we sort of stay with the one grace we know and we don't move past that, it's less hopeful, less peaceful, less joyful than what we're going to have a double header tonight on grace. Say that there's only two sides of grace. I learned a long time ago not to put limits on God. There may be 52 sides. Look at the two that he has revealed to me recently. And I just became aware that grace which is our salvation grace. We're all familiar with us in right standing with God. It's what redeems us, makes us whole, us, strengthens us, eternally saved. But do you know that that grace is a one-time grace? It's a one-time grace. We are saved one time. We are saved one time. God will never throw us out. He'll never cut us off. We can for another time. We can choose to walk away from him ourselves. We can do that. But he's keeping his end of the bargain. He's holding on to us, and he's holding on hard for anyone who truly knows Jesus to walk away from him. But there is that I want to give you is that there's one grace for salvation where we all start. But if we don't move beyond that grace to the disappointed, confused, not having a clue what's going on around us, knowing that the Bible says, this is, I, this is mine and I can be able to look around and know that there are things available for us in Christ that are never manifesting what we want. We want our lives filled with life and filled with hope and filled with promise. And if there's a promise, it's ours. I mean, there are no exceptions. There is no place in scripture where you'll find a word of God that doesn't apply to you if you've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. There are no exceptions. But when you look at the promises in the Bible, how many of them realistically manifesting in your life? How many? You don't have to hold your hands up or tell me because I can tell you the list is long for all of us. Ready. The way that we receive this is with this second grace. We're going to look at these two graces. All right, so we're going to look at the first side, which is which I am calling the cross side of the grace, the Calvary vertical grace that is what we need to be reconciled with God. Every single one, Lord and Savior, have already stepped direct, and it tells us that Jesus bore all of our sins. He took care of all of us for us. In Galatians 3.13, we'll not go there, but it tells us that he became a curse. He hung, became a curse for us so that we are redeemed from all of the curse. If you go back and you all, most of it is recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 28. You can down that list and you can say, well, that doesn't belong to me. 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 And then you get these things in your life that come along like COVID. And why is it on my, on my body when it's clearly under the curse? I'm supposed to be sick. I'm not supposed to be confused. I'm not supposed to be demented. I'm not supposed to be any of those things. It, it happens because we have not yet entered into understanding and apprehending the second grace, which is resurrection grace. Resurrection grace. Nancy did a, a great graphic for us. Forgiveness is our vertical relationship with God, and there is grace, cross, 
grace. I'm calling it cross grace. And then the side of that is resurrection power. And see where the victory is? It's in the middle of those... On the cross, Jesus forgave all of our sins. Jeff did a good job with this earlier. He forgave. That means he's forgiven the sin that you've already committed, the sin you're thinking about going to commit 10 years from now. He has forgiven all your few. He forgave all sin, all sins under the blood of Christ Jesus. And all men, every man, every woman on the face of the earth have acts that grace and all grace given by God is accessed by faith. This is God's part. Faith is our part. It's the way the kingdom works. We got saved by grace through, tells us very clearly in Ephesians, losing to believe that and accept it as our. Well, resurrection grace comes the exact same way, but it gives us a different dimension in God. It gives us a play of promises that we see over and over and over again in this. And we don't see manifested so much in our lives. Let's take a look at uh, Romans chapters. I'm calling this the dual side or the second side of grace. Uh, through the resurrection of Jesus, we all got the power of God is what we're looking for in the, our walk with him. You can have your vertical relationship with God fully right, and you can go through this life and never hit on any cylinder with resurrection grace, and you will still go to heaven. That's guaranteed. Your, your salvation isn't contingent upon your victory. But wouldn't it be a whole lot? You don't have to be sick, sad, sorry, oppressed. You can be filled and I can be filled with the fullness of everything God has for us by the second side of grace, this resurrection side of grace. Did you find Romans? Romans chapter 6, verse 4, We are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the... So, like he was raised up, even so, we should also walk in the newness of life. We're to walk in this new life, the exact same power that raised from the dead. That makes it really, really, really clear. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. It says, Even when we were dead and sinned us together with Christ, for by grace are ye saved. We were dead in sin, but we're quickened, we're raised up. The grace that saved us, that grace that moved us into salvation, authority in Christ Jesus that we're not accessing because we're bypassing that step called grace. I'm calling resurrection grace. Resurrection grace is available for you. Every deficit in your life absolutely put down under your feet. Absolutely. Already provided. Did not Jeff already tell us that everything we need is already provided? It's already given? Do you believe that or not? I mean, that's what you believe it? If you need a healing today, do you believe it's already provided? That's all you want. But if you don't jump over and apprehend the, uh, the resurrection of that into manifestation and into reality in your life, you'll just sit being sick and sad and sorry. And that is not the plan of God for our lives. That is not his will for us. His plan of his children be raised up into his likeness. We're actually predestined to that for them, so I don't have it for them, for you to look at, but it's Romans 8, I think it's like verse 26 or so, that destined to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ and into, well, do you look like Jesus? We, maybe not so much today. Unto us, it is already charged unto us, his enablers in the earth. I shared with you before that I teach it all the time, and he corrected me, and he says, no, nah, that's not right. He goes, that's the way. You're not my hands and feet. You're not my hands and my feet. You're my glove. Always be the hand that moves, and I will always be the feet that go. So we are just allow him to step into to do his work, because everything that flows through us as believers flows from him. We're not, we're not full of our power, we're not full of our more love, we're filled with him and innocent love. And we can release it 
by accessing and apprehending this resurrection grace. Right? So, I want us to look at Romans chapter 8, verse 11. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. So let's just stop there. Does the same spirit that raised the same spirit, the exact same one, get a baby Holy Ghost? <laughs> you did not get a little bit. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit, and all he has came and moved in, you are now the temple. Believe that? Now, if we really believed that, I mean, if we really believe that, I mean, we can with our heads acknowledge we really believed that, then we would be looking a little more serious out. You know, we, we've got him locked up here, and we're not letting him out. And our job is to let him out. And we, out, and we allow him to use the resurrection power that has been given. Let's continue here. He is in us. He dwells in us. The same one that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, quicken. That word quicken also means to uh, energize or to uh, excite your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Is that I was doing a word study and the study was on the word grace. Well, if you'll go through your Strong's Concordance or your Vines Expository or whatever concordance or whatever we find, that there are several words, trained grace, in the New Testament that have different meanings in the Greek. Now, I would have never thought that, grace train. That mean grace. And we're going to look at two of them. The first one is a little tiny word. It is pronounced in English, real easy to pronounce, ho, ho, H-O, ho. It's a definite article that means to again, used again and again to define that vertical cross grace. There's another word, it, it's, uh, in English it would be charis. Charis means to benefit, to give scripture after scripture after scripture especially in the writings of Paul, where we are tan, we should, we will, we must. And the word grace is inserted. That word charis is the word that is used. Not ho, not the supply. Just read in Romans chapter 8, the spirit that raised him up from the dead that raised him. That word quicken is a derivative. It's not the word charis, but it is a derivative of that word, meaning to empower, give you the ability, not just to give it to your pastor or the priest or the bishop or the apostle, but to you, to you, individual you, so that you can apply in your own life what you need to see wholeness, victory, and to benefit. All right, let's continue. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Special to me, the Lord gave this to me when Michelle died. Actually, a portion of this is actually on Michelle's headstone. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most is that the power of Christ may rest upon me. My grace is sufficient for me, thee. That word grace is charis. That word grace is my power for you. My ability is sufficient. It's enough. When I ordered Michelle's tombstone, I wanted it to say, uh, his grace is sufficient. And I wanted the word in the place where they made the marker and told the guy what I wanted. He said, well, I, I don't have any, so we, we're not going to be able to do that. I said, well, I want that. And he said, I'm not going to be able to do that, I tell you. <laughs> she says, oh, honey, you can do it. Just cut the top off of a T and turn it sideways. And that's exactly what he did. He cut the top off of a T and put it and made it sideways. So Michelle's tune is sufficient. Do I know? Do I know? For those of you that know my story, do I know that his grace is sufficient? You bet I know. And where did I get the ability to walk in grace? Now, I couldn't have told you that in words back then. But looking now, I can tell you did it. I, and I want us, all of us, to begin to, 
this same grace that is already within you, this same quickening that is already within you, is about every situation that you face in life every hour of every day. You don't have to be sick and sick. You don't have to be confused. You don't have to be sliding deeper and deeper away from life. The place for every one of us to access this grace. So how did I do that? How did I access that grace? Looking back, you know, sometimes you, the, they say that the valley is priceless. You know, you, you can always look back and see what you should have, could have, would have done As later. Uh, well, we need to be looking forward and being able to build with challenge because the enemy is not going to give up. He's going to continue to do what he's really good at. But if we get really good at what we can do, we're going to continue to get this. I'm going to go back to the day that uh, Michelle died. Michelle died on a Sunday night. I found night. I drove home. I was out of town when it happened. I drove home, and I'm standing in my kitchen in the dark. I'm not going to rehearse the end of this. And for those of you that have ever been to our house, we have this teeny time. We don't have a spare bedroom. Staying on the pull-out couch in the living room. If I turn the light on in the kitchen, I'm going to wake her in the living room because it's only, <laughs> you know. So I'm up in the dark, and I'm pacing in the kitchen, and I'm having, you know, what, why, how, when. You know, you know all the W, you know all the W words that you run through when things are going on in your life. And I was arrested, like, it was almost insulting him, asking the W words. The, you'll know you'll have a sense. Married, you know, you know, what your, your spouse is thinking. You know, you know, <laughs> they don't have to say a word. You know what they're thinking. I can tell you when Lee is, I've gotten on his very last nerve when he doesn't, ha I, he doesn't have to say no. Yeah, anybody relate to that? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> you just know Pull down because things are going to get really ugly really quick if you don't. Well, I had because I wanted to know what, why, and how. I, I, I just wanted, I wanted answers. It's what I wanted, <laughs> answers. And in that moment, in, in that that confusion and just pick a word and uh, any negative word you can think of, you can throw that into this. You'd be the same. You would be the same. And I'm standing here understanding that I'm standing at a crossroads. And I can go one way or I want you to hear. It's 100% your choice which way you go. And no one can make the choice for you. And I'm standing there, and I, I, I'm just overwhelmed with sorrow and grief and confusion. And I, in the depths of my being, not in my head, in the depths of my being, a very clear river of peace. This peace to get out of here and get here. It's, I mean, but up here, I'm still going crazy. Do you get this resurrection grace that you already have? Because that's what that was. It was that resurrection grace. How do you get it up? And how do you get it out? And how do you get it to manifest for you? I simply said yes. Whatever you say. Whatever. I won't put it. It's not yes, but... Or yes, if it's yes, in up a situation. I'm going to say that you've just got this up. You just got a diagnosis that you have liver cancer. It's now stage three, and that's getting pretty serious. Immediate treatment, immediate, immediate. You know how quick they are. You know the, the medical profession is going to cram this down. Your let's see, let's let's clear my calendar. Let's get. Mm -mm. Did a sermon a long time. Always give God the first 10 seconds, at least. In any conflict, in any trial you run into, the enemy is in your face. He's just in your face, BJ, and he's just going to rub. Before you act, before you speak, before you move, before you blink, you say quietly something like this. God, what do you have to say? Questions. He doesn't, he doesn't need any help. What do you think about this or what do you think about you? No, no, no. What do you have to say about this? Because if it's right here, he will answer you here.
right. I have to practice listening. It sounds really weird, but it's the truth for those of you who've done. Learn how to listen to your belly. Shut this brain off and listen. And in an instant, God's going to give you some direction. And from the beginning, but he'll give you the next step. He'll give you the next step. And, and you take that step, he'll give you the next. And with each you become less confused, you become less sorrowful, you become less painful. In just a few moments, in my kitchen, telling you a few moments, I'm going to say from beginning to end, the entire discourse I had with God was less than four minutes. From total torment, total grief, total agony, total confusion, to complete peace, complete peace, four minutes. Access that resurrection grace from that day to this, that's 28 years ago. Shame on me. I see now, I see now how important it is that we access. It is not something we think about only, talk about only, but it's something we pursue and actively access. We access it. This, remember, I'm going to talk about two, cross grace and resurrection grace. There might be another 502 other graces, but we're going to talk about those two. It says very clearly, grace is access is not believing. I know this sort of takes a little bit of wrapping your brain around it. Faith is not believing. Faith is a noun. Believing is a verb. Faith is a, believing is an action to, to access that thing. So faith is a solid set, completely undeniable, completely unmovable word of God. That, the, the measure that you set yourself on, that is what is real. Real. Your Believing it, your action is your own. So it was his. He hands it out to you, Mike, and says, here, it's yours. And your response is, I'll take it. I'll take it. Just like a little cookie. Mm -hmm. How many times have you ever seen a parent hand a cookie to a kid that didn't just get devoured in a heartbeat? Mm -hmm. Every kid will grab every cookie and then want five more. Well, you need to be the five grab cookie kid. You need to be the one expecting that resurrection grace to manifest in you so that you can have as a reality, as a reality, everything he's promised. The Lord has just recently began to sort of chain, and I've probably said it here, and you've probably heard me say it, and I'm going to repent. If you're waiting for the manifestation, I'm waiting for the manifestation. I'm waiting for the manifestation. I've got the word. I'm waiting for the... Well, that means you're walking by sight. But you're not receiving until you see. Got that? He doesn't walk by sight. That became sort of real to me in reading about the baptism of Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, before he ever did a single miracle, healed a single person, anyone, set any captives free, the Father says this. If he waited to say it later, then he would have been walking by sight because he would have waited till he saw what Jesus did before he approved of him. God accepts us, as Jeff said, exactly as he has created us in Christ. He accepts us and we can take everything he's given, everything, and we can step into it. And I've been rewritten. The song Stacy did been rewritten. The story is now hope. The story is now peace. The story is now wholeness and, and prosperity and anything else that you need along the way. That story is already written. So to apprehend it, we apprehend it with resurrection grace. That's how we apprehend it. Let me get back to my notes real quick. Uh, resurrection grace speaks mostly of our horizontal, that's why I think the book is our horizontal relationship in this realm. Yeah, this realm. We won't need resurrection grace in heaven. You know, we won't need it there. We need it here. And rest will cause us to walk free of sin, cause us to walk out of the bondages of the enemy. It'll cause us to be under the influence and control of God all the time. I want us to look together at uh, 
let's see, let's go 15, 5. In John 15, 5, Jesus is speaking here. I am the vine and you are the branches and whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears part from me, you can do nothing. Resurrection grace causes us to bear fruit of the Spirit, our gifts that are given to us by resurrection, those fruits, and we are to be fruit bearers, to multiply, taste, and see that the Lord is good through our lives. Through our lives, the hardest to do with your own family. You probably don't know that, but I'll give you a clue in case you don't know. This is the hardest to do. My friend Clarice says, uh, Dr. Clarice Fluid says, uh, God, Holy Ghost, sandpaper, and you either marry it or because it, that's just the way it is. Everything in your life is friction and the greatest challenge in your walk with God is either going to be your spouse or your children or your grandchildren. We <laughs> got some grandchildren, a boat back there for grandchildren. I want us, me, beginning with me, to step over into this resurrect power of it because I've walked in it. The, the quickness, how quickly it manifested. Looking back to that morning, this was not days or weeks. This wasn't even a day. This was my coming to in my life that had been horrible and, and sad pointing and all of those things combined. How many times have I walked through? How many for me? If we are going to victorious church, that Jesus is coming for. And he said he was coming for a glory. He absolutely said that. He is coming back for a glorious church. Years ago, this beautiful, beautiful, best, most exquisite dress and veil, and just the most beautiful, you know how a bride is the most radiant on her wedding day. And uh, if you looked at the painting real close, of a combat boot sticking out from underneath her dress. <laughs> radiant and ready. We'll be prepared. We'll be prepared because we've learned action grace. We've learned how to connect with the Holy Spirit that is already resident within us. Take that charis grace. Let me read for you again what charis means. Charis given with liberality that releases ability and strength. You already have that, you know. You already have it. Hebrews 10, 24 says this, all the way down, the, one of the last says this. Did you get that far, Miss Charity? Okay. 10, 24, it says this, And let us consider one another and provoke one another to love and to good works. We are to provoke one another to works of the kingdom. I'm doing that tonight because I am provoking you to step over into this place where you are asking God regularly, resurrection grace. I receive your resurrection grace. Reveal your resurrection grace in this situation. I want to have access to your resurrection grace. And you don't need to be looking everywhere for it. You don't need to be looking everywhere for it. You just need to look within because it's already been given. It's already a part of your spiritual DNA. Your entire spirit, man, is complete life, completely filled with that power. And God will give you every tool necessary to release it if you'll just put a demand on it. What have us, Linda, included is that we get weary. We get weary because we've asked once, when we've asked three times, and we've asked ten times, and nothing has changed. And then you've got kids and, and grandkids and neighbors and friends and co-workers that are telling you how bad it is. It looks bad and it seems bad. And instead of taking faith, that word of God, that promise of God that said, whatever. He sent his word and healed me. I'm just going to pick one. He sent his word and healed me. In that, that's the faith, the scripture, the word, the undeniable word, taking that and asking God for the resurrection grace to apprehend that, we just fall to the wayside. Isaiah, I believe it's 55, 11. I'm going to, I may be wrong. I've been wrong before. 
5511 or somewhere in there, it says that God watches over every single word he speaks to perform it. Amen. It's over it. So you have your word, whatever the word is. Faith, this is my substance. This is my substance. This is it. And I need the resurrection grace to make it a reality in my life. And then listen from a quiet, deep place, and the Lord will tell you what you need to know. He'll lead you where you need to go. He'll give you everything you need with nothing missing and nothing broken. This is his promise. This promise to you. Amen. 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 One last verse and then we'll close. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. He's able to make all grace, all grace, and that is the word charis. That's the word charis, the, the strength, power. Ooh. He is able to make all ability, all strength, all power abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every abound. He's able. He wants to give it to you. He's already released it to you. It's up to us now to apprehend that resurrection grace. And God is able to make all grace, all grace, all, all abound, abound, or abound, abound. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, oh God, that your word is sure and true and that, Father, you have given us this power. You've given us this holy power, your spirit. And Father, I pray that you make us full of his power in us and his of us. And that, Father, that we don't go through life just trying to make it on our own. But that in every situation, Father, we yield to this grace. We thank you that you've, you've so bountifully, freely given us this grace. And we have so freely and thankfully taken it. And Father, tonight we choose to take resurrection grace as well. We say out of our mouths that we are the children of the resurrection. We are the children of the resurrection. We are empowered. We are endued with that power from on high. And we will be witnesses to Jesus in the earth, basically in us, that others you have. What is that I see? Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Resurrection grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that resurrection. Thank you for the multiplicity of grace, the multiple layers of grace. You've given all things, all things, all things. We lack nothing. We lack absolutely nothing. Father, to make that more real to us tonight. Father, help us to access it in a way, Father, that it makes a reality, a present reality in our lives. We thank you, Jesus. We want to be your will and that you are good all the time. In Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I encourage you to ask the Lord for resurrection grace. Just ask him, ooh, I need that resurrection grace. I, I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it. I need it. I've gotten to the place I refuse to live without it. I think that's a good place. It's a good place, and I encourage you to get to that place. If you're not there, just refuse. Refuse to live in defeat. Refuse to live in loss. Refuse to live in whatever the enemy is shoving down your throat. Refuse. Just refuse. When we were talking with our friends from Bolivia the other night as well, and their business over it because they were closed down for so long that they couldn't recoup from that. And we were just discussing with them why we thought that happened. And this is why we thought that this was actually resurrection grace and we didn't know it. We couldn't put words around it. We together, when the whole mess was flying through and we just said, we're opting out right now, right here, 
we're opting out. We refuse to walk in agreement with COVID or any variant of COVID, and we will never have COVID. Lee will never have COVID. I will never have COVID. We will forbid COVID had COVID, either one of us. In hindsight, some of you have already had COVID, but variant coming, it's not too late. <laughs> this is not too late. Opt out. Just opt out. That's the key. Opt out. The blood of Jesus, take that understanding and opt out. I opt out because I have the resurrection power of Christ in me. I give you an opportunity to sow seed into Linda Markowitz Ministries. I thank you, thank you. Did you get that photo? I wanted to show you a photo. I took this off of my iPad. Uh, this morning my show on Sid Roth aired. This, you don't see red teaching on abortion. We're teaching on the pro-life, uh, you can pull it up or not, but under, under the picture there, it says I am, and first aired on December the 14th, 2021. Can you see it? It also says it has now had 1.6 million views. It has now had 1.6 million views. ISN has again and again at how, how powerful our teachings are and how they are going wildly going all over the world, all over the world. And you are a part of that for all the airtime. That is a gift from him to me. But we have to pay me to stay home so I and prepare these programs. That is not light work. I wish I could tell you it was light work. But I spend hours and hours preparing a single program. And every time we go, we tape multiple programs. We're to tape an entire new season. And it will probably take me no less than 200 hours total to prepare for that. Well, you pay me to stay home and stay in the word and write the, the right to stay in this building. You pay lights here. You help us pay our cameramen and the people that you don't even see in the back. There's this little hole. There's this box in the back. And there are people in the box. They, <laughs> They are making all of this happen. Now, there are graphic people and, t and camera people and audio people in the back. There is Nancy in the back. She's feeding social media the whole time that we're out here. All of these need, uh, need to be compensated. The Bible says the laborer is worthy of his hire. Tribute to that every time you give to Linda Markowitz Ministries. And I say thank you. But I know God says thank you because the message is being heard. The message is being heard. This particular, I, I learn from me all the time. I, I'll listen to me and I'll think, well, my goodness, I didn't know that. <laughs> and it's, there are layers and layers and layers and layers. So if you're making a MM and if you're giving cash and would like a tax deductible uh, receipt, you'll need to have an image. Jeff, thank you. Uh, just hold your hands up and Jeff will get you an envelope for, for you. You can do that. You can go to lindamarkowitz.com and select the give option uh, that he or Debbie both, either one would know how to use uh, if you would like to do that. There are many, I encourage you to sow seed. Sow seed for your blessing. Sow seed for your return. Just throw it in there and say, okay, here, I think I'll bless you today, Linda. No, no, no. Give it to the Lord. Give your seed to the Lord. You can't give it to the Lord and you can't give it cheerfully. Keep it in your pocket because it won't do you any good. This is the story that I, I briefly alluded to. Uh, I find no fault is the story of the death of my daughter and what God did as a result of that. Yeah, you got one too. Thank you. It's available in the lobby. It's available online. It's available uh, through our website.